Now you have to remember, we were in the worst shelter in New York City at the time, called Fort Washington's Men's Shelter. This shelter housed a thousand men, a thousand men on a drill floor. The nickname of this shelter was called the House of Pain. One of our sisters knew a sister of mercy, and they were very distressed with the homeless people that they would meet on the street, who often had no one to talk to, people would walk around them, almost treat them as if they were objects rather than people. Most of the people in there were, you know, black, Hispanic, you know, and so you have these two white sisters coming in there and they're short and they're small. And they would just gather folks around, invite them to sit in a circle, invite them to talk together and pray together. They always came. You knew they were coming every Tuesday, so you knew they, it was something with them. Slowly, their work began to build a spirit of community. They had been asking me to come to these meetings, but of course I never went. Um, just wasn't, wasn't ready at that time. Um, but this time, I was ready. I went to that meeting because I wanted something I knew I needed to change, but I didn't know how to change. One of the best decisions I ever made in my life. I look at Sister Dorothy and Sister Teresa. Um, they were called here. It was something inside of them that wanted to do more and to work directly with people. Each of us is called to be part of the more to be part of what um, makes our world a better place. They had the incredible gift of being able to identify and inspire people from the homeless community and say, you can, you can do this work too. You can be part of this work. The team is special. We're, we're here together and we're helping each other to get better. And when you can get a group of homeless people like that who have come up from the ashes and can show this, this kind of a love to one another, it's powerful. I believe that every single person deserves to be cared for and deserves to be loved and deserves basic things like food and shelter. We're giving people a spiritual and emotional home. It's not necessarily like we're giving people a roof over their head, but we're giving them a place to call home. Charity isn't just giving. I, I would say to you, I think about charity as helping people to become the best that they can be. One day I sat in a group and uh, I just started listening. From then on I started opening up more and things started getting a little better for me, you know, just to me the fact that somebody was listening to what I was saying. I started getting confidence in myself and uh, able to start looking at myself as not a waste and a failure that I had more to live for. Oh man, there's, there's nothing like it. You know, when you've seen people that others have gave, given up on, whose lives are being changed, I can't keep what I got unless I give it away. And uh, these days I'm a team member at LEFSA and uh, you know, I try to give back what they gave back to me. I can't explain how much, you know, LEFSA has done for me on my first retreat. I went away out the city and uh, I finally got an outlook on how good life could be. When I see uh, others getting well, it brings me so much joy and appreciation that I'm involved in a process like this. You know, it's, um, it, it, it's, it's amazing. Their vision was that people who are homeless need to hear that God cares about them and God loves them to be a part of this legacy that's been going on for 200, imagine, the Sisters of Charity have been around for 200 years doing this work 
And because of the Sisters of Charity, we're able, life and faith sharing, is able to continue that legacy. We know that we can't do everything, but what we can do, we do it well.